gonna we're gonna deal today, and our topic is still on baptism. And the text today comes from 1 Corinthians 1. We're going to start at verse 14. A little background on Paul the Apostle. This is a man that was used to pen a good portion of the epistles which were written to the church. Why is that? Paul got the memo. There was a memo sent from above which he explained in, in, in uh, Ephesians 2.8, we're saved by grace through faith and that not of works, lest any man should boast. Paul got the memo. He was an old, diehard, staunch, Old Testament believer who did a 180, and that's why God was able to use him, because he, and he also explains in Galatians how he did not go back to Jerusalem to get his instructions. He didn't even go back to the, to the disciples who many would have thought would have had the answers. But the disciples still hung around Jerusalem for a time, and yeah, you will see where Peter and them thought it was important to baptize with water, but they also thought it was important to circumcise, which in Acts 15, they settled this issue and said, hey, we're done. These, these uh, old laws and rituals are outdated. So in 1 Corinthians 1, Paul makes a statement, I thank God that I baptize none of you but Crispus and Ga Gaius lest any of you should say I baptize in my own name. And I baptize also the house of Stephanus. Besides, I know not whether I baptize any other. So Paul mentions, yeah, I did get caught up in that first season. However, in verse 17, for Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. In other words, Paul's saying, okay, I did get into some of that water stuff, but the baptism I'm dealing with now is preaching the gospel, the doctrine of Christ, the cross of Christ, the one that where you're baptized into his death so that you could resurrect into his new life. I'm preaching something that gets results, something that's effective, something that works. I'm preaching the doctrine of Christ. And if you read Paul's itinerary, you see why he suffered so much opposition because of the doctrine he preached, the gospel of Christ, the cross of Christ. Well, I want to be like Paul the Apostle. Well, do you want to be beaten, stoned, shipwrecked, let down through a basket? Because if you didn't get let down through a window in a basket out of town, they'd have killed you. You really want to, is that what you want to see? Well, obviously he had a doctrine and a message that worked. Thus the opposition. He understood that the power was not in the outward anymore. It was in the inward. Why is that? How did he find that out? Well, let's go back in Acts 19. And verse 1, And it came to pass that while Paul was at Corinth, oh, excuse me, that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus. And finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be a Holy Ghost. He said unto them, Well, what then were you baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. Now today, when I see people still operating under that, the old John's baptism, when they claim, that tells me that they're in a holding pattern. They're still on the carnal side of the veil of the flesh. They haven't crossed over. They're in a place where you're not going to get results. You're not allowing the Holy Ghost to have his way. Because the Bible says that Jesus was anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power. Well, you take the Holy Ghost out of there, you've taken the power. What have you got left? Religion. Basically, all you got left is religion. Religious people doing religious things and claiming something spiritual is going to happen. You know, that'd be like, you know, you read about Moses and they were out in the wilderness and the people complained, oh, we need water. We need water. And Moses didn't know what to do. And he went to the Lord. He said, well, there's a rock. Speak to the rock and it'll shoot water out for the people. And the Bible says that rock followed them and that rock was Christ. It was a spiritual rock. Well, today, when you learn to speak to the rock, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water as well. But there again, that's the realm 
of the spirit. And if you want to worship God, that's the only place he operates, in spirit and truth. And that's it, Paul, in verse 4. John verily baptized with water, with the baptism of repentance. Let me read that again. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him, which should come after him, that is Christ Jesus. Now remember we talked earlier, Mark 1, 8, John baptized with water, but you shall be baptized. But, you, but, Acts 1 talked about, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Something better was come along. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. In other words, Paul was telling them, speaking to them about the baptism of Christ, what it really entails. It was something spiritual. That's what we're doing here, teaching the doctrine. Of we're baptizing spiritually. And when Paul laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. Wow. They were baptized in the Holy Ghost. Something changed spiritually. Well, isn't that what you came to the Lord for? A spiritual change. Something different. I want to go back to uh, Mark 16. And verse 15. And he said unto them, Now this is what the Lord told his disciples. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Now that doesn't mean they had to run around the world to preach the gospel to every creature. Today we got a lot of people that think satellites, their goal and their calling as life is to is well, God's tool is satellites and they have to run around the world and drive around and, and all they want is money so that and they guilt the people thinking, well, we're the ones that are going to preach because the gospel has to be preached before the Lord can come back. Well, all you have to do is read Revelation 14, 6, and you'll see that the Lord took care of that. He's got a way that he's going to preach the gospel to every creature. However, he's speaking to all Christians. When you, wherever you're at, whatever part of the earth you're at, wherever you hear this, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes, so he that believes and is baptized. Now there's a big word, is. Not was, not, well, if you, you believe and then you were down there at that river years ago and got dunked, oh, you're good. No, is baptized. No, you're not. As many of us are, that were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death. That's a continual process. Paul said, I die daily. Is, now faith is. This is a continual process. Shall be saved. But he that believes not shall be damned. Remember we talked about in Romans 6. The only way you can believe is if you die. Well, you have to kill the old man so the new man can believe. The old man is just, the new man is the one that believes. The old man is the doubtful, fearing, weak, and timid person. That's the one you want to get out of the way. The new man believes, trusts, and steps out in faith. A perfect he establishes a perfect love which casts out all fear. And and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. If you have a new heart, you're going to speak with a new tongue. Out of the abundance of heart, the mouth speaks. You know, it's just not you know gibbering some some language. It sounds like some tribal language from some lost tribe in, in uh, New Guinea or something. Blah, 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 blah. The new tongue means you're going to be speaking about a newness of life, about a new man, which is Christ. A new that's the new man you're going to be speaking about. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Well, there's a lot of deadly doctrines out there that people are drinking, but it's not going to hurt us because the Holy Spirit will filter out the impurities if you exercise your senses to discern both good and evil. But I want you to key in on that, the big little word in verse 16, he that believes and is. Know you not that many of us were baptized into Christ, were baptized into his death. That's a continual process. And the baptism is the one the Lord said. You know, John baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Let's concentrate on the Holy Ghost, the realm of the Spirit. That's where the action is. If you go to a football game, are you going to stand out in the parking lot? 
if you got a ticket or you're going to, hey, I'm going to get in. i got a seat on the 50-yard line. I'm going to be right there front and center to see what happens. And how could you describe the game unless you were there on the inside? You're going to be on the outside and, oh, I hear the crowd cheering. Something good must have happened. Oh, awesome. No, get in. Get in there. Get in. Get seated. Find out what's going on. All the actions in the realm of the spirit. That's where the power that's the one that the Lord acknowledges. That's the only place you can worship him is in spirit and truth. Let's quit fooling around in a dead carnal realm with dead carnal people. That's what religion is. Religion doesn't work. Stop the insanity. Whew. And I believe we're going to go back here. In Matthew 28 and I'm at verse 18 and Jesus came and spoke unto them saying all power is given unto me in heaven and earth Wow all power not just the power to raise resurrect people outwardly but inwardly a new man is now resurrecting a new man is coming forth. A new man. A new day has come. A new man. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. All things become new. Why don't you let this watered down, water baptism stuff pass away? Leave it in the graveyard. It's dead. Every time you dig up something dead, it just gets more rotten. It's more undesirable to deal with. It's infested with disease leave it there leave it in the ground go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the father son and the holy ghost in the doctrine of our lord jesus christ that's what we're here to do is baptize you into christ into a realm of spirit and truth where the lord's operating and where you need to be that's what's going to get you home that's what you want to give account of you know every one of us should give account of himself before God you know do you want to go stand before the Lord oh I was baptized with John's baptism oh and then what oh that's it well flesh and blood cannot inherit John that was <laughs> that was Old Testament I'll date it well then I went out and we got everybody together and we we, we struck the rock and we're waiting for water to come that's but the same realm same stupidity, same insanity. Yeah, let's get everybody together and we'll stand by them. We'll have a, a rock concert. A bunch of rocks, strike the rocks, see if water will come forth. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world. The Lord will never leave you nor forsake you. He wants a new man to resurrect. How? By operating in the realm of the spirit because that's the only one that works he said that you must that's the memo from above so let's take the water that we were going to pour over our head and pour it down the drain and start immersing ourselves in living spiritual waters baptizing them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the complete name that will make you complete and whole. So God bless and stay baptized.